All right, 13.5 factor in binomials. Starts off with the difference of squares. So in this section, we're going to have three different formulas that you're going to have to use in order to factor. So up to this point, we really haven't had to use formulas in order to factor. So these three scenarios, you would have to use these formulas. Um, but once you um, get used to them, um, the lesson is about using a formula, but seeing a scenario and reacting to it. So the first one is difference of squares. It says that, and you know, the key word here is difference. And then the other one is squares. So in other words, if you have the subtraction of two perfect squares, then you can use this formula. So notice it has x squared minus y squared. Then you take the root of those and break it up into x plus y, x minus y. All right. So in other words, if I have a squared minus 25, a squared is a perfect square. That's a times a. 25 is a perfect square, which is five times five. So I recognize that's a squared minus five squared. Then I break up the factorization into a plus five times a minus five. So if you have the subtraction of perfect squares, then you are able to break it up this way. So are they looking for actual no solution, just the formula? Well, you know, we're, we're still factoring. Okay. So remember, like we had to try no your last class and we broke it down into this. Yes. You know, so we still doing that same thought process. It's just that we have this and we break it down into those two parentheses. You know, if you were to foil that out, that'll give you a squared, that'll give you negative five a, well, this will give you positive five a, then that'll give you negative 25. So these are canceled in the middle, just give you a squared minus 25, which is what you had. Okay. All right. So we're looking at this next one. Okay, here we have 49s squared minus 4t to the fourth. So once again, you have to ask yourself, do you have perfect squares? So 49 is a perfect square. That's 7 times 7. So we have 7s because they get x squared. And then 4t to the fourth. So that's 2t squared squared. And if that's the case, then you can break it up like this. 7s plus 2t to the second times 7s minus 2t to the second. Oh, wait a minute, what happened? Can you go back up? Mm -hmm. Where'd it go? Uh, can, you just, can you say that one, one more time? Mm -hmm. Can you go over the explanation one more time? Yep, you're looking at these and ask yourself, are they perfect squares? Uh, if you take the square root of them, do you get a perfect number, a solid number? Seven times seven is 49. And of course, S squared is just S times S. So that's what we have here, seven S. 4T to the fourth, two and T squared. If you multiply those two together, you'll get 4T. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. And you know, so basically it's saying if you have the subtraction of those two, two perfect squares, you can break it up this way. 7s plus 2t squared, 7s minus 2t squared. Okay. Don't copy that one yet. 
Yeah, I want to do something else. Everybody good with that before we go to another one? All right. So if I had y squared minus four over nine, y squared is y times y, four over nine, uh, that's two over three, times two over three. And so, it's y plus two thirds, y minus two thirds. All right. And you know what I'm doing this math? It's like my brain's got to register what you're saying. It takes <laughs> <laughs> I feel a real stop. Like, wait a minute, what'd you say? I got to uh, really think about it. <laughs> yeah, nothing wrong with that. Sometimes we got to process. Process. <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with that. Try to see something before I write this other one. Yeah, I got one right here. Okay. Can you go back up to the Y one, the Y plus two thirds? Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, so one more is look at this one right here. 18w squared z minus 2z. So notice the first thing that I did here was factor out the GCF. There's a 2z in both of these. So if you factor out 2z, you're left with 9w squared minus 1. Then we see that uh, 9w squared, you know, is the perfect, or the square root of 9w squared is 3w. That's what I have right here. Square root of one is one squared. Well, square root of one is one. And so that means you can break it up like this. Don't forget the two Z is still a part of refactorization. Any problems? All right. So the sum of squares, remember that was the difference of squares. The sum of squares is prime. You cannot factor that. So if there's a plus sign in between the two squares, there's no formula for that that cannot be factored. So before, remember we had a squared minus 25. If you have a squared plus 25, that cannot be factored. That would just be prime. So that's not really one of your formulas. That's just uh, to let you know if you see it, don't try to factor it. A lot of people will try to factor that. They'll come up with a plus five, a plus five, and all different types of things. Uh, but if you were to check it though, you know, pull it out and check. Remember, I told you that you can go back and check by multiplying it back out. It will not give you this. So this is prime. So when it is prime, we do what again? Right, prime. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, but I heard you say, don't try to factor it out. And then I'm like, right. okay, what do we put? Okay. Right, right. Yeah. You're right, Brian. <laughs> mm -hmm. So right here, just making that comparison again, if you have P squared minus nine, then we can do P plus three, P minus three. But if you have P squared plus nine, that's not factorable. It's not that bad. It's almost over. <laughs> You're talking about a semester with this class. This class. That's what you would have told me. I got to be around. Uh, You've been hanging around me too much. <laughs> uh, okay. Everybody good? All right. Let me erase some of this so we can walk through it. All right, so this next one, we have W to the fourth minus 81. So we see that both of these are perfect squares. W to the fourth is W squared squared. 81 is nine squared. So because we have that, relationship, then we know we can break it up into W squared plus nine, W squared minus nine. Any problems with that first step? So that first step you just was mentioned, it was this W2 squared plus nine squared. That's how, you, that's what you were saying. You didn't go any farther than that. Did you? Right, right, right. All right. So now they're going to want you to uh, factor completely. So right here we have the sum of squares we just talked about. We can't factor that. But right here we have the difference of squares. And we can factor that. So they are going to expect you to factor completely. So I can break down that into x plus 3x. And that should be x. It should be w. x is out of habit. So the w squared plus 9 just comes straight down. And then the w squared minus 9, break that up into W plus three, W minus All right, questions, any questions? Everybody cool with the difference of squares? All right, so the next two, remember I said there were three, so the difference of squares was one, and then the next two, difference of cubes and the sum of cubes. So this time the sum does have a formula. So last time we had perfect squares that we were looking for. This time we're looking for perfect cubes. So if we have the subtraction of perfect cubes, then we can use this formula to break it down. If we have the addition of perfect cubes, then this will be the formula. They're basically the same formula, it's just that our signs are different. So they're the same form, we just have different signs. So one way to remember it is SOP, that same opposite, and then plus 
So in other words, if you have x minus 3, I mean x cubed minus y cubed, this is going to be the same as this one. This is going to be the opposite as this one. And then this one's always going to be plus. So if you want to, you know, remember the signs. Say that again. Oh, what was that? Opposite. Oh, was, okay. Same. I got it. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to make out your e, your M. I'm like, what's that? It looks like an M. I got you. Yeah. I was about to start writing it, you know, a little better. It's okay. You go See if I, It's all right. See if I can use some color coding up here. You know, I be writing your little arrows and stuff because it helps me break down as I'm working by myself. So I really okay. draw on these arrows for real. Okay, cool. I get lost. I get lost sometimes. So me drawing the diagram as you draw it, I can go back. Oh, okay, it. cool. I keep I keep on doing it then. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if that sounds a little elementary, but when I get stuck, I can go through mm -hmm. the steps and and show me what I did. Oh, no, well, I, I do them um, with the hopes that it helps somebody, you know, so. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know about anybody else, but it does for me because I can go, okay, I, I missed this one, this part right here. <laughs> mm -hmm. It takes me a little while, but I get it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. So the main thing, like I said, they don't have anything for the letters. Though. You know, you just have to remember X, you know, X, Y, X squared, X, Y. Y squared, you know, you have to remember that. But then I'll, after that, if you can remember, like I said, same opposite plus, um, that's how you hold on to the signs. Yep, yep, yep. Everybody good? Can I, everybody ready to try it out? Still copying the formula. Um, about that. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, did you meant to put those Y's down there, or was that supposed to be X's? Where? Right here at the bottom. Is that the same example you're about to break down, or that's a whole nother one? Right. One underneath it. Uh, maybe I was going too fast. Okay. So this is the formula right here. These two formulas. Oh, okay. Yeah, so if you saw that down there. I started writing what was underneath it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you ready to go there? Uh-huh. Okay. Where's everybody else at? I feel like I'm the only one. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they just taking it all in. That's all. <laughs> I, like, I wish she'd shut up. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So let me erase some of this stuff so we can walk through it. Okay, so the first thing we want to recognize is that we have this cube right here. So we know we can't look at the perfect squares, you know, the difference of squares or the sum of squares. So it doesn't matter here. So now we have to ask ourselves, do we have perfect cubes? So of course, W cubed is just W times W times W, so that's a perfect cube. But then 64 also is a perfect cube. That's four times four times four. So since we have perfect cubes, we can use this sum of cubes formula right here, wherein the first letter W is going to go in place of X and then four is going to go in place of Y throughout the formula. All right, so let me put my stuff back. <laughs> All right. So this is just me rewriting the formula. And like I said, W is going to go where X is, and 4 is going to go where Y is in the formula. And so and that's what I did right here. So that's why we have W plus 4, W squared minus W times 4 plus 4 squared. So that's what we have right here. After you plug it into the formula, then you simplify as much as possible. 
W squared is just W squared. W times four is four W, and then four squared is 16. I love this year. All right, questions, any questions? Hold on, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. All right, um, I guess I'm not, I didn't really hear your explanation, but I'm not going to ask you to go through. <laughs> oh, well, all we did was uh, once you, you had to make sure you get the cube of each one of these, see if they're perfect cubes. And W cubed is W times W times W, so that's all that was. 64 is 4 times 4 times 4, so that's why we have 4 here. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, okay, I got it. All right. All right. So, yep. So then you just put four, put W where X is in the formula, put four where Y is in the formula. And that's what we did right here. And then from there, you simplify the expression W squared is W squared. That's 4W. And then 4 squared is 16. Mm -hmm. Any questions on that before we do another one? So this next one, 27P cubed minus 1000Q cubed. Same thought process. Is this a perfect cube? So 27 is three times three times three. So that's yes, and then you include P because we have PQ right there. 1,000, is that a perfect cube? That's 10 times 10 times 10. And once again, we're including Q because we have Q cubed right there. So that means we have 3P and 10Q that we will be substituting into the formula. All right, so once again, you put 3P, the first term where X is, 10Q, that second term where Y is. That's what I did right here. So we have 3P minus 10Q, and then 3P squared plus 3P times 10Q plus 10Q Any questions? Um, I don't know if I understand this at all. Maybe it's because I need to do it. I'm just getting confused. How you break the three squared down to two squared? You say you break the three squared down to two squared? Yeah, I said it's kind of confusing me. How do you like? I know I'm, you're saying it, but I'm not mm -hmm. understanding how you're doing. Well, are you okay with this part? Yes, because I know that three squared is twenty-seven, and I know ten squared is a thousand. Well, cute, cute. I'm cute, that's what mm -hmm. I meant, yes. Right. So now, when we go to this step, is that where you're having a problem? Yes. Okay, so now, you know, well, let me go back here. Uh, I just erased that. 
So at this step, all we did was substitute. We just took 3P and plug it in for X. Then we all took- All the way across. Uh-huh. Okay. And then we took 10Q and plugged it in for Y. All the way across, okay. In the formula, right? Because this says that I have perfect cubes, the subtraction of perfect cubes, and that says I can use this formula right here. Okay, so all you did was go through and break it down and plug the numbers in. Mm -hmm. All right, maybe I just gotta see it a few more times. I understand what you're saying as you're explaining it. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. So then from there, you just simplify as much as possible. 3P squared is this 9P squared. And then 3P times 10Q is 30PQ. Uh -huh. And then 10 squared, 10 piece, 10Q squared is 100Q squared. Okay. I think I got it. Maybe it's just all the different variables maybe i don't know but i can understand it like that bottom part mm -hmm. nine squared because like you said when you said it i can i can tell you the numbers so i understand that part i just I think well it's, it's either first time seeing it or first time seeing it in a while i'm pretty sure because nobody I sits at home doing this it. i've never seen yeah so you just gotta give yourself a chance to digest it um pretty sure nobody sits at home doing this for fun so you know <laughs> <laughs> Some people might, you never know. <laughs> well, most people I come across, though, I don't even do it for fun, so, you know. <laughs> so, let's look at another one. 125A cubed plus one. All right. Once again, we see this cube right here, so we know we're not dealing with squares. So you ask yourself, is this perfect uh, Q 125? And the answer is yes, that's five times five times five. Also one is a perfect Q, one times one times one is one. All right, so we have the sum of cubes, the sum of two perfect cubes. And since we have that, we can plug those into the formula. 5a for x, 1 for y. And that's what we have right here. All right, and simplify that. 5a squared is 25a squared. 5a times 1 is 5a. And then 1 squared is just 1. Um, when you simplify the 5a, doesn't the um, the power of the two for twenty five a go away? Well, it goes away when you apply it to the five, but you have to apply it to that a as well. And oh. so, yeah, the only way you can represent that is as a squared. Yeah. Good question. Good question. Yeah. All right. Everybody okay before we go to the next one? All right. Let's see. Every square trinomials. We did that last class. Okay, there's something else. Well, we can do this one now. Okay. 
All right, so here we have four X cubed plus four X squared minus 25 X minus 25. So whenever you have four more terms, we want to do factor by grouping. All right, so that's what I did right here. I broke up the first two and the second two. Also, don't forget this minus sign is right here. So that needs to be included inside of the parentheses with the 25. So from there, we can factor out GCF in each parentheses. So in this first one, I factored out 4x squared. In the second one, I factored out negative 25. And so that left me with x plus one in both my parentheses, which is what I need whenever factoring by grouping. So I bring my x plus one to the front. That leaves me with 4x squared minus 25 in this parentheses right here. Now that is the difference of squares. 4x squared is 2x times 2x, and then 25 is 5 times 5. So I can break that up into 2x minus 5 and 2x plus 5. Questions, any questions? <sighs> now you got me on it. Say again. I said, now you got me on it. <laughs> All right, so let's look at the last section of this chapter. Yeah, which um, it's not that bad. Reason being is because we can, uh, we're going to use what we've done up to this point, and we're going to use it to solve. This is 13.6 for you guys, 13.6. So before when we solved equations, we had linear equations and they only gave us one solution. This time we have quadratic equations and we're gonna get two solutions because our highest degree of our variable is two. Um, don't worry about this right here. That was something that was asked in the previous class. Well, we had linear equations before when we had one solution. Highest exponent of our variable was one. Here, highest exponent is two, so we should be getting two solutions. All right. 
All right, looking at the zero factor property, some books call it a zero, pro zero product rule. So it says if A times B is equal to zero. I'm sorry. Hmm? Can you go back up a little bit? Well, I, I missed something that I wasn't. Oh yeah, I'm done. Okay, I didn't know. I just flipped that out. Okay, I'm sorry. Are you fine? Mm -hmm. So if A times B is equal to zero, it says that means either A is equal to zero, B is equal to zero, or both. So what that means for us is that what we want to do is have this type of scenario, x plus 2, x plus 5, I mean x plus 3. In other words, we have our two factors, two factor um, expressions. Once we get that, we can set both of them equal to 0. So I have x plus 2 equal to 0, x plus 3 equal to 0, solve them. By subtracting two from both sides and then subtracting three from both sides. That's what I did right here. And then that will give you my two solutions. So we're going to have our trinomial, factor it out as much as possible, then set each piece equal to zero and solve. So you use your factoring skills you've learned up to this point to break down your trinomials or break down your expression and set each factor piece equal to zero and then solve. All right, problems with that before we try it. Um, no, go ahead, we can try it. All right. So it says to solve, set one side equal to zero. Remember, it's called a zero factor property. So if you don't have one side equal to zero, then you can't use a zero factor property, right? Can't, you know, can't compare it to zero if you don't have a zero. Then you're going to factor completely. Set each of the factors equal to zero. That's what I just finished talking about right here. And then solve each factor. So really, I could have did one, two, three, and there are four steps. So we have 5x squared plus 8x equal to zero. So remember, you always supposed to factor out your GCF first. And that's what I did right here. I factored out x. I missed how you did it at the top. So I'm really, I'm not, I can't follow what you said. What do you mean how I did it at the top? In the beginning, when you started with the first example, this one right here. Yes, I was busy. I was writing. So when oh, it was nothing to do. I didn't do anything. I'm just saying this is what we want to have. You know, I factored parentheses. That this is what, if we were starting right here, we would have both of those set them equal to zero and then solve. So this is what you want to have. I didn't say I didn't do anything. I just if we have this right here. Uh huh then you set each part equal to zero. So notice I set x plus two equal to zero, x plus three equal to zero. Oh, okay, I got it, all right. Mm -hmm. So now the question is, uh, let me go to this. how do I get here? And that how did we get there before is when we factored, when we factored our trinomial, broke mm -hmm. it down to those parentheses. So yeah. your goal is to get here, your goal is to get here so that you can do this. Uh, so once you factor it out, then you can set each part equal to zero. And so that's what I was saying here. You know, you want to set one side equal to zero, then factor. 
Remember, factoring is what gets us here. You know, you factor it, and then you can set each part equal to zero. So that's what we're doing right here. I have my expression or my equation. I factored it. I, I pull X out. So I factored out the GCF, which was X. Now I set each part equals zero. You know, I set X equal to zero and five X plus eight equal to zero. Mm -hmm. And now you go ahead and solve it. Now this one is nothing to solve. X equal to zero is just one of your solutions. And then the other one, you would subtract eight from both sides and then divide by five and you get your second solution. All right. Questions on the process. So your goal is to factor first, factor completely first. Then once you've done so, you can set each piece equal to zero and solve. Solve for it. So solve for your variable. Any questions for do or no? All right. So let's look at the next one. Um, I really can't. Hey, I don't understand. So I just got to just follow along right now. <laughs> Well, right now, um, well, don't look at this as something that you haven't done before. Look at it as this is stuff that we've done previously and we're adding one extra step. Now here, all we did was, uh, here all we did was factor out the GCF, which is what we did uh, in previous classes. Right, but I'm not understanding how you get the GCF to be zero though. No, 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 the GCF was X. And how would you know? Okay, see, that's the part that I'm not understanding. Mm -hmm. There's no number there. It's just a, a variable. So how are we supposed to know? Well, you see X in both of your terms. Oh, so we would have to distribute the five to the X. To the, to the five uh, to the X square and then to the X, no? What are you talking about if you were to re reverse the process? So now remember factoring is the reversal of multiplication. So you pull an X out of both terms. And so now if I were to multiply X back, then I will get my original expression. So it goes back to what we were doing originally when we were factoring out or pulling out a common term from each. And so I had X that was in common with both of these. So I pulled that to the outside and that left me with five X plus eight on the inside of my parentheses. Okay, now I understand that part. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. I, I got it. I got it when you say it like that. I don't okay. I excuse me. Okay, okay. All right. So we good and then from there you just set each part equal to zero. You got two different pieces, you got x and then you got five x plus eight. Set so both of them equal to zero. And then you can solve That's your the solution. Part that I don't understand. How does it equal to zero? Because when you're solving an equation, uh -huh. you want to know when is this true? When is 5x squared plus 8x equal to zero? One, one of the solutions is when x is equal to zero. One of the answers is when x is equal to zero. The other is when negative 8 over 5 is equal, uh, when x is, x is equal to negative 8 over 5. So in other words, if I were to take zero and plug it in right here and right here, the result is going to be zero. 
Okay. Also, if I were to take negative eight x, negative eight over five and plug it in for x, my result would be zero. All right. So you're trying to solve the equation. You want to know when is this statement true? When is five x squared plus eight x equal to zero? And these are the two times that is true. Okay. And remember, you always can check by plugging them back, plugging them back into your equation, and it should give you that. So same thing happens here. This goes back to what we were doing last class as far as factoring your trinomial. We have p squared plus 3p minus 10 equal to zero. And so it factors out to give me p plus 5p minus 2. So remember we were talking about going, looking at our back sign. If that back sign is negative, then we'll use plus and minus. And then the greater would take on the plus sign. So that's why my five is positive. All right. And then if I were to fold this back out, though, I will get this trinomial. So once again, you can check by doing P times P, P times negative two, five times P, five times negative two, and you'll get this trinomial back. But once you factor completely, now you set each piece equal to zero. Five p five plus p equal to zero. Five minus two. Uh, five. I said five plus p. P plus five equal to zero, and then p minus two equal to zero. Set both of those equal to zero and solve, and you get your two solutions. All right, questions before we look at another one. I have a question right here where you got the P. Mm -hmm. um, negative, P negative two, then you got uh, plus two at the bottom right here. Why, why, why does it go, why is, does it cancel itself out? Is this a positive and a negative? It goes to the positive two. So you're talking about right here? Yes. Uh-huh. Yeah. So you want to solve for P, so you do the opposite operation. So you're gonna add two to both sides, and then those twos will cancel. Oh, okay. I thought it was a negative sign there. I was like, why is it negative? Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. It might have got erased by mistake when I was going down or something. Okay, got it. All right. Now I understand when you do the breakdown like that, because I know how to do that. But maybe I guess the other way is just, I got to think. Are you talking about this one right here was a little different? No, when you see how you did the breakdown of the P's right here, mm -hmm. I had to do that part. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm saying. So what was the difference here? I don't know. Maybe it was kind <laughs> of, but I was just getting a little confused. Well, you, uh, or, or it just might be that you, you know, you're processing. Maybe. Well, I'm going to sit back and think about it. So let's look at this one. So you have 8k squared minus 47k equal to 6. All right, so first thing we recognize that we don't have a zero right here. We want to make sure that is zero. So we're going to subtract 6. Let me erase this. And that'll give us 8k squared minus 47k minus 6. And I already had a factorization down there, but the way you should be processing this is that, you know, we have that minus sign in the back. 
And so we know our signs are going to be plus and minus. All right. Then we're looking at our factors. Uh, why is that coming back? There we go. Looking at our factors of eight. That's one times eight. <clears throat> Excuse me, one times eight and two times four. Then our factors of six, one times six and two times three. So don't forget we need to get 47 in the middle. And so that's why I chose the values that I chose because when I do this multiplication right here, let me go green. This will give me 48. And then that'll give me the one, which will help me to get 47 in the middle. So that's why, you know, we talked about factoring these trinomials before. You know, you want to be processing or thinking about, okay, what times what will get me closest to this 47. And so that's why I immediately would have jumped to using eight and six, because I know eight times six will give me 48. And so, um, so we have 8K plus one, K minus six. If you were to fold that out, you know, 8K times K is 8K squared. 8K times negative four is negative 48K. One times K is K. One times negative six is negative six. And then we see this negative 48K plus K will give me negative 47K. All right. So once you establish that that is your factorization, Go ahead and set both parts equal to zero. All right. 8K plus one equal to zero and then K minus six equal to zero. Go ahead and solve those. Subtract one from both sides, then divide by eight. That'll give you negative one over eight. And then for K minus six, add six to both sides. K equal to six. <laughs> it's all right. Everybody good with this one before we do at least one more. Let's see if there's more. Yeah, we got a few more. Make sure we straight the time is okay. We got time. All right. Let me erase some of this. So this is our problem right here. Five n cubed minus 65 n squared minus 150 n. So first thing we recognize is that we don't have one side equal to zero. So we wanna change that by adding 150 to both sides, 150 n to both sides. And that gives us this. 5n cubed minus 65n squared plus 150n equal to zero. Now this time we have our highest exponent of three. So we should be getting three solutions here. So what I noticed is that we can factor out GCF. Five N. So 
So you take five in out of each one of these terms. You are left with n squared minus 13n plus 30. Make sure we're all right. All right, so now we want to break this up. Into your two sets of binomials. N minus three, N minus 10. You know, N squared is just N times N. And then factors of 30. We want them to add together to give us 13. So that's three and 10, three times 10 is 30, three plus 10 is 13. So before we go any further, any questions on how we got here? We factored out five in, and then we factored out that trinomial into these two sets of binomials. Once you factor it out completely, set each piece equal to zero. So five in equal to zero, and minus three equal to zero, and minus 10 equal to zero. And then you solve each one of them individually to find your three answers. Divide both sides by five, get n equal to zero. Add three to both sides, get n equal to three. And add 10 to both sides, get n equal to 10. All right. Questions, questions, questions. Okay. So next class, uh, we will be reviewing. Uh, you bring whatever questions you want. Uh, if you want to see me do more factoring, make sure you ask me, um, you know, bring some problems, you know, that you may have tried and couldn't figure out. Um, but anything out of well, whatever, it doesn't matter. It doesn't necessarily have to be out of chapter 13, even though that's the chapter we're in. You know, if you have questions on anything, uh, make sure you bring them next class. We'll discuss them, go over them, and go from there. Uh, we'll not be doing any new material next class. All right. Any questions before we close out today? Everybody good? All right. So you guys have a good one. Be safe. And I will see you on next class. No, you see me Friday. All right, thank you. <laughs> All right. Well, next class is going to be before Friday, right? Oh, yeah. I'll be here that day. <laughs> <laughs> Back. All right. Take care. All right. <laughs> I hope you can't wait for the next upcoming anime in the spring. Who? Which one? You know about uh, the Slime Diaries? Mm -mm, I haven't heard of those. So you telling me I need to check those out? Yeah, but apparently it's actually going to be a slice of life for that time I got reincarnated as a slime. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm going to check that out. Okay. So you saying that's a new one that's coming out? Yeah, coming out in the spring around April. Oh, okay, cool, cool. Yeah, I'm gonna check that out. I, have, I hadn't heard of them. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. 
And then there's also How Not to Summon a Demon Lord season two coming out. I haven't got a chance to get into that one yet. Yeah, I saw that when I was like, man, I got it in my, my little queue to start watching. I have not got a chance to look at that yet. So that's a good series as well. Yep, I watched the first season a couple weeks ago, I think. Okay. Okay, cool, cool. I got some stuff to check out. All right, I appreciate it. Sure, no problem. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you have a good one. Thanks, you too. Bye. All right, bye.